Good evening, everybody. Lou Santiago. And tonight, you're watching Three Lefts Don't Make a Right. And in some places like Spotify, you can listen to Three Lefts Don't Make a Right while you're driving back and forth from work or to work. So technology is an amazing thing. But here's the thing about technology. Technology applies to everything. Tonight, we have Bruce, the owner of Modern Driveline. He's the guy when you got some cool old car and you want to get better gas mileage and you want to drive a stick or the car has a stick, he's the one who can hook you up with a five-speed conversion. And they got some cool ones now. So you got to keep that in mind when you're talking, when you're listening to us talking to Bruce. So here's what we're going to do. As usual, Brad's going to take us to a commercial. Then me and John are going to tell lies. And then we're bringing on Bruce from Modern Driveline. So sit down, hold on, and let's bang some gears. Hit it, Brad. More than 25 years, DEI has been controlling heat and sound, all with products developed to protect components and drivers alike, and has become the standard by which all heat and sound control is measured. Each product is developed with solutions to problems in mind. DEI knows when it comes to making and keeping horsepower, heat is the enemy. Innovative technology allows us to develop the highest quality products, quality driven, and that's why the best builders and race teams in the world use DEI. John. Yo. <laughs> I, I guess, listen, I guess I got to watch what I say because what, Danielle, what? Bruce's daughter is watching and I have no idea how old she is. <laughs> so, She's in high school now. She's in high school now. Yeah, still, so wait a, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I got to show you this. I got to show you this because that's Punch from Bob. Danielle. That's from Danielle and her sister. There you go. So it's, 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 it's a pretty funny story. You know, when I work in my when I would work in my shop, I had two TVs and I would just play TV shows instead of a radio. Yeah. So whenever Bruce would call me or I'd call call him when his daughters were younger, they would be in the shop or on you know they'd be in the office with him and he'd have me on speaker and they could hear SpongeBob in the background. <laughs> so they they've sent me SpongeBob socks. They've sent me this SpongeBob T-shirt, Bruce. They had Bruce deliver it to me at SEMA like four years ago, and I only wear it on special occasions. <laughs> they stop. They stop watching. They outgrew it. You're still watching. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're like two mental patients out here. <laughs> oh, they're in college. They're in college now. I thought they were. I thought they were. I thought they were in high. I thought they were finishing up high school. But yes, yeah, yeah, so that's that's. So I got my I got my SpongeBob T-shirt. There when they go. when they sent me socks, I took a picture of my feet with my feet up in the recliner and yeah. SpongeBob on the TV so you can see the yeah. socks. They're really digging it. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. That's cool. Yeah. They're thinking of you. Yeah, right? I just thought it was funny. SpongeBob. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, when I saw her name pop up, I'm like, all right, okay. <laughs> Gotta watch. What was, you know, I didn't know who it was. I knew it was related. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> then when she said hi, so, Dad, you, got, like, oh, so you, got, you got anything good going on? What do you got? Talk to me. Let, let, let's tell lies. Come on. Uh, supposed to be producing, trying to outline it, get ideas now. A TV show uh, called uh, on Barn Barn Dominiums. Barn Dominiums. Their houses that look like uh, barns. Yep. They look like barns. You're going to go to Texas and shoot it? No, it's going to be probably uh, South Carolina, North Carolina. You're wasting your time. You got to go to Texas. I think that's what he started. <laughs> Probably. I can see that. Um, I still haven't come up with a gimmick. I'm still trying to outline shit. I may have to go down and check it out and do a walkthrough to try to find some kind of spin for it. Yeah. But they're asking me to develop that out. So me and the team trying to figure out what to do there. It's different. Right. It's fit. another project for horse TV. You know, I just yeah. have to try to make it horse related and make it entertaining. You see what Scott said? His dad gives him hell for watching The Simpsons, but he watches wrestling. <laughs> like that, right? So my grandmother, when 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 we were growing up in the Bronx, we were kids. My grandmother, my my grandfather had bought a four family house, you know, so it was four apartments. So my grandparents, my mother's parents, lived above us in the front. So on Saturday night, we were allowed to watch wrestling with grandma and you know back then it was on uhf yeah. it was uhf yeah. 
yeah. black and white TV, and after yeah. wrestling was creature feature. And my grandmother would only speak Spanish to us, right? So we get, you know, we're all sitting in bed with, with our grandmother. And if we got too rowdy, she'd beat our ass. Because <laughs> wrestling was on. <laughs> she was in the moment. Oh, my God. Yeah. She... <laughs> That's when wrestling was pretty cool. They had the midget know, wrestling right? right around that time, too. You can't even say the word midget anymore, but they had, used to have midget wrestling. Miss, yeah, yeah, midget wrestling. How yeah, times yeah, have yeah. changed. That's back when Archie Bunker was on TV. And he would when just Archie say Bunker things. was an American hero. Now he's right? Now he's an American. I don't know what you'd call him now. Yeah. <laughs> he's a pariah. He's yeah. a pariah. <laughs> uh, either way. But uh, also, too, uh, I think I may have mentioned this, is the Rick Ross car show coming up next month. The rapper Rick Ross. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is, and I'm, I'm going to try to get him on the show to promote his car show, but he oh, bought cool. Evander Holyfield's old house. It's on 280 acres. Really? Yeah, it's supposed to be like a sixty thousand square foot house. Oh sixty thousand. I think the White House is fifty five thousand. <laughs> Give you an idea of how big this house is. Dude, but he's he's got a hundred and twenty cars himself. Yeah, my my um one of my sons showed me a video he did with like all the cars lining the driveway. Yeah, and I think they were all tri fives with the exception of one. Yeah, it he's was insane. That. Yeah, he. I guess he's a big car guy. He is. Uh, I, I think uh, there was an interview where he did. He said he had a half million into a '57 convertible. Man. Uh, so Ed uh, Brumfeld from North Carolina, he said, "Get a hold of '57 uh, Freddie." You mean Ed from New Flex Orleans? You mean Ed from? Yeah, New yeah, Orleans? yeah. He told me to get a hold of '57 Freddie. We need to he get a hold of Funk Master Flex. Yeah, that would be a good I've, one. I, you know, because he, I met him at SEMA years ago. Yeah. 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 It was, it was pretty crazy. I wasn't expecting, you know, him to know me, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. he's like, Lou, I'm like, um, who are you? And he goes, Funk Mass. I'm like, oh my God, no way. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he started to say this, I was like, okay, I know who you are now. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's yeah, a super nice guy. He's a super yeah. nice guy. Yep. So that was yeah, cool. that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's but funny. When is uh the open house for Scott's Hot Rods? Scott's Hot say? Rods. Scott's Hot Rods is May fifth. May fifth, so it's not May even 5th. close to the twenty first. Right, and then Hotchkiss is um. I wrote it down. I, I turned it to hold on. It it's is a week after, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I I tore the page up and I threw it in the trash. Uh, I totally forgot. I got it right here. Settle down. Thank God those kids don't take the trash out. I know, right? <laughs> they do their damn jobs. I wouldn't have this problem. So Hotchkiss is May 21st. Hotchkiss same is May day. 21st. No. Same I as Rick said, Ross. I said May. Oh, yeah. Same day. Yeah, Rick Ross. I was thinking you said, you know, I was thinking Scott's hot rods because I'm looking right at it. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So Hotchkiss is open house is the 21st of May. Scott's hot rods is the 5th of May. Uh, yeah, so we should be good. And then, and then Power Tour is four twenty, April twentieth. Is that what it was? Uh, June twelfth, third. June twelfth. Okay, I had four twenty written down there. I didn't know why. Oh, four twenty is the open show. It's the open, open show. show. Yeah, open show. So for you guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an open show, and what we need, and you guys send your pictures to three lefts don't at gmail dot com, and we're gonna pick some car. We're gonna pick some pictures. And we will reach out to you and have you talk, come on and talk about it. Or, you know, we're, we're going to we're going to do it like we did it in the first season. And we'd have we'd give everybody like 15 minutes, the three or four people that we pick. And we talk about their projects, what they're doing in their world, that kind of stuff. So send your pictures to three less don't at gmail.com. And we'll we'll get we'll find some cool stuff. All yeah, right. Also, also, if they have any questions for Bruce, we're going to take the the better questions about quarter of uh, nine. Oh, the, the ones we okay. don't get to the questions that come up that people write in. Yeah, so, <laughs> there's pork chop. Pork chop yep. is four twenty. Yeah, four twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Tater tots is four twenty. <laughs> Pop tart. Well, yeah, what'd you Pop call? Tart. Pop tart. Pop tart. I call them pork chop. I call them tater tot. <laughs> I never get it right. It's, uh, you know. 
I don't expect <laughs> anyone to get my name right because I'm a train wreck, so it's okay. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. So that's where we are. All right. Yeah. So let's uh we're done. Let's go to commercial and we will talk to Bruce of Modern Driveline. Brad, take it away. <laughs> What you need to do is check out DEI, Design Engineering Incorporated. They keep the heat out so you're not sweating to death. Check them out. <laughs> Bruce. Lou. <laughs> what are you doing, man? Oh, man. On the rev limiter. <laughs> For a guy in overdrive, I shouldn't be on the rev limiter. No shit, you should be. You should be idling. You should be idling. I should be. <laughs> leave the over. Leave, leave the high speed stuff to me. <laughs> John's a Cadillac guy. He's Italian, so it's, yeah, don't even worry about it. <laughs> I do have a Lincoln. So I, you know, I go both Same ways. difference. <laughs> Same difference. It's an Italian car. <laughs> That's racist. That's racist. I'm going right, to is. <laughs> okay, you want me to say Goomba car? <laughs> hey, say whatever you want. I don't care. Mobster, whatever it is. Guinea. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bruce, <laughs> before it really like, starts, I'm, out. I'm done with these guys. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty loose. It's pretty loose. So, Bruce, <laughs> when did you start? Modern, modern drive line and then the dog barks yeah uh, my it's my uh, ringtone for the uh, shelby um <laughs> I, start, <laughs> I started about 24 years ago actually out of my two-car garage in san jose california wow that's right so, you came out of california yeah i forgot yeah it was yeah, uh, yeah. originally a vermonter boy uh, <clears throat> but came out to california for a, a job of relocation I don't know if you remember, Lou, but I was in the semiconductor industry for 18 years before I That's retired right. and, and did yeah. this gig full time. Yeah, I remember you told me that. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Because I never knew what a semiconductor was. So I, I know it's something for computers, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can tell you about it. I don't know nothing else about it. <laughs> but Bruce, so now, what made you? What yeah. made you get into it? What was the start of it? What was the turning point where you go, you know what? I may be able to do this and. and jump into it. What, what, what's the beginning? Yeah, the beginning basically is passion. You know, for me, I've, I've always enjoyed cars. Uh, it was always been a hobby. And uh, I was tinkering with my own cars. I was, you know, open tracking with the NorCal Shelby Club in San Jose, California, and playing with my five liter Mustangs. Yeah. And from there, it was kind of like, you know, I wanted to play, but I wanted a little extra income. So I started working for a guy locally in San Jose, a guy named Charlie Bruno. In fact, over my shoulder here is as a car and he's featured in it. But uh, long story short, Charlie mentored me as a kind of a, a night gig that I was doing on the weekends mm -hmm. and things. And we were putting superchargers, big brakes, handling packages on just about anything that would roll, including RVs. Charlie would supercharge and put headers on gear vendor overdrives and RVs. Uh, but <laughs> he did everything. Thing was, uh, I, I wanted to get involved with the NorCal Shelby Club, and I didn't have a Shelby, um, couldn't afford one. But all the five liters were the rage. So anyway, I started working, uh, you know, for Charlie part time, and uh, I bought a '65 Mustang, and you know, it was it was a project car. You know, V8 automatic. It was originally a six-cylinder car. It was kind of a kind of a mess, really. And uh, I put the car together, and I didn't like the automatic. And we had all these broken T5s hanging around the shop, you know. And <clears throat> and it was really one of these deals where, what's it take to put a five-speed in a classic Mustang? Yeah. And I looked at what was on the market, and there was just nothing out there. And long story short, I thought, hey, I'll make this piece and engineer it. And, bought somebody else's stuff. And I said, this stuff is garbage and I need to make it better. And uh, at the end of the day, I got the five speed in. the guys in the club are going, Hey, how did you do that? I'd like to do the same thing. You know, and one thing led to another, a little thing called eBay that was in the Bay area, you know, so it's like, yep. 
hey, I could sell some stuff on eBay. And anyway, <laughs> website came along and well, kind of the rest is history. But we left the Bay Area 2006 and uh, came out to Idaho, as some of my friends would like to say. And uh, people say, oh, how do you make a connection from California to Boise, Idaho? Well, the connection was with the semiconductor. I was actually working for Intel at the time as a field or as a equipment engineering tech. And yeah. the folks who were supporting the equipment sets that I was working on said, you know, you've kind of chased us out of here with a contract. You've done such a fantastic job supporting the equipment. We would love to have you join our team. If you can't beat them, join them kind of mentality. Yeah. So I said, what do you have in mind? And I said, well, we got this gig in, you know, in Boise and uh, it's, you know, Micron. And I said, okay, I don't know anything about Idaho. And so I got on a plane, came up here and I'm like, hey, this is pretty good. Yeah. You know? And unfortunately, there's been a couple of million people behind me from California who's joined me. And this yeah. place is just crazy. They're building houses like they're going out of style here, you know. Man. Housing yeah. prices in the last year have gone up 25 to 30 percent in Woo! months. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, we came here. It was affordable. It was friendly. Cost of living was was where we wanted to be. And my wife and I grew up in New England, so this was a little more of that. But um, boy, has things changed. Man. Bruce, back back up to the 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 first what? What would you say? It's a sixty five. What year Mustang? Yeah, sixty five Mustang Coupe uh, started out as just a little plain Jane car. Got a little two eighty nine uh, that was redone as a uh, you know three hundred six. Nothing fancy. You know, kind of updated. But yeah, put a T5 five speed in it with an overdrive. Um, yeah. Doing that, doing that swap the first time out, what was the biggest headache? I know you're saying that you had other people's uh, stuff. I guess it was a conversion kit of some kind that somebody put together, bell housing. What was it that you bought? You know, back in the day, there really wasn't conversion companies you know, available. And maybe one, yeah. two at the <laughs> most, but people were selling pieces, you know? Mm -hmm. and the problem was that nobody was selling. Nobody had reproduction clutch pedals. Nobody really had a, a solid cable kit, hydraulics, cross member. Um, yeah. yeah, you were borrowing parts from the five liters, but at the end of the day, you know, um, it, it took, I guess, pa pa passion for doing it. With starting with the with the the early you know Mustang, but over the years, it's graduated well beyond that. But you know, if you're looking back, somebody says, hey, you're going to do this for a living. I had no wild dreams of doing this, but <laughs> one thing has led to another. I've met some great people in the, in the industry and we've innovated into uh, well beyond uh, Fords. We do GMs and Dodges. We do six speeds, five speeds, uh, street rods. And you can kind of see a little bit over behind my shoulder there. A little Pete and Jake, you know, artwork. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> To, to us, as long as it's two-wheel drive and domestic, that's pretty much our market. So we've innovated w so much through the years, um, you know, so we've had a really good run. What do you sell most of? What's your most popular? Right now, I would say that the Tremec TKX is probably the biggest seller. I mean, Tremec really hit it out of the park with that unit. Well, the TKO, TKO 500, 600, everybody knows so well from you know over since 2004 was re uh, completely re-engineered in a smaller platform end loading design much stronger and that unit shifts now to 8,000 rpms and it's much wow. smaller package hell what can't you put it in you know right uh, yeah so uh that's been a huge seller and we've been doing a lot of innovation with that product well and you don't and and the whole thing about the tkx is you don't have to go cutting the transmission tunnel up to make it fit like the TK, like the TKO was. That yeah, was the biggest, the that TKO was the biggest was a proverbial, you know, square peg yeah. round hole. Yeah. 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 I mean, to me, that that's the biggest selling point of the TKX, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's just worth it. Now, I don't know if a lot of guys know this, but I remember you were telling me when the TKX came out that um they're going to, the TK, the TKO was dead. They're not, they're not going to make them anymore, right? Is that still Well, it's true? just like last year's model. I mean, at the end of the day, you no longer make a, a 2000 
you know, 21 model, you're moving on to the 22. Well, that's what the right. TKX, X in the marketing terms was next generation. Got you. Next. <clears throat> next. Yeah, there you go. See, John, you need one in for your Cadillac. There it is. Yeah, yep. I was I was actually thinking going stick with the fifty one. <laughs> I actually was just to freak people out. You know. What so I mean? now, but, yeah. It, now, ahead. Bruce, does um refresh my memory? Does the TKX have like the TKO, the three different shift point, the three different locations where you could put the shifter? Or it, it does. Or does it not? It yeah. does have that. Okay. It does. Like in the photograph you're seeing here. What this is a modified unit, mind you, but if you're looking at the back cover, this you know the silver area, and then of course there's the red shifter in the middle, and then where right. the MDL sticker is is the what some people would call mid shift, uh, some would call front shift, but right, those are the three distinct locations. Got you. Okay, yeah, because I have not, I've only seen pictures at a TKX. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I was. I'm, I remembered you telling me something about that when it wasn't supposed to be out. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell John about your van. Actually, tell everybody about your van. <laughs> the van. Yeah, my van used to be uh, Charlie's uh, rig. He was the original owner. Short wheelbase, 74 Conaline. Um, in fact, I'm working on it right now. I had some mechanical issues. But yeah, 410 Windsor Stroker motor with there fuel injection. Is. Some JBA long tube headers on it. Um, C6 automatic with a gear vendor, nine inch rear, rear end and Wilwood brakes and sway bars, chin spoiler. I just had the interior done with leather and just got the wheel back with leather wrap. And Damn. Yeah, yeah. Going the shag up, wagon's right? getting uh, like Damn. Lots. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to put a about 15 it. seconds at a quarter mile. <laughs> And it's a brick. <laughs> yeah. 42 gallon gas tank. I can pass a few gas stations. There you wow. Go. There you go. When are you going to wow. put a five speed in it? Oh, no, man. No. <laughs> Danielle's talking about the Aerostar. <laughs> Her brick. The br <laughs> God. <laughs> so, what do you, and do you have anything coming out that, that's, uh, that you can't talk about? Well, yeah, but I can't talk about it. Well, then, then well, you got to tell us because that's why you're here. <laughs> well, is that what it is? What's exactly. in the black hole? What's in the black What's hole? The, yeah, what are you working on? on? <laughs> What's in the skunk works locker? <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're always working on stuff. I mean, you know us. We go to SEMA. We always got to put our A game on. You know, two years ago, we won uh, best new engineer product for some of our hydraulics. So that was a big honor to, to, you know, to get on the big stage there at SEMA and, uh, uh, I was very fortunate that my dad was uh, was 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 with me at that show. So um, it's uh, it was nice to be greeted by uh, uh, Kevin Olsty, who hosts you know a lot of the show. But uh, to have my dad there, and you know the guys had no idea what was about to happen. They couldn't figure out why we had VIP tickets to the front of the room. And I finally I said to him, guys, I said, "Have you figured it out yet?" And he goes, "Figure out what." He says, one of us has gone on that stage in about five minutes. And uh, yours truly was the first guy up. And uh, they forgot to turn the mic on. So I had to repeat myself in front of this large room oh, with all boy. these cameras and lights. And I had nothing rehearsed. I completely made it up uh, on the spot, you know. And so it was all good. That's awesome. That's awesome. It is good. Yeah, that's cool. So, so John usually does an outline, but he didn't do one today. I don't think. Did you do an no, outline? I, I got one. I got a couple things on here. I, what I wanted to go through, <laughs> honestly, to slow it down and, and break out what you actually offer, because I don't think it's real clear to the average, average dude. Sure. Let's say that. Let's say that you got a uh, early seventies, mid seventies Trans Am uh, Camaro, and you want to put say a it five right, speed. Fire chicken. Fire yeah, chicken. you want you want to put a five speed in it. So you want to take, you know, and upgrade this thing. What do you offer? What headaches do you know that that guy's going to come across? And what, what have you done to change and head those headaches off? You know, the, uh, the F, uh, F car, as we commonly uh, affectionately call it, the platform, you know, Camaro, yeah. Firebird. Uh, those are actually quite easy uh, because the tunnels were, 
it's a pony car. The tunnels were more pronounced. The cars that give us the challenges are the the GTOs, the 442s, the the A bodies. You know, yeah. the Chryslers are even more challenging. But you know, sticking to the J, the GM stuff, the Camaro from first gen all the way through the TKX is a bolt in. You take a Muncie out, put a you know the the TKX in its place, That's new awesome. cross member and you know, an, an offset shifter in there and you're in business. So it's awesome. it's about as plug and chug as you can get in, yeah. uh, with the TKX. Yeah. Six speed, more challenges, obviously, bell housing, linkage, whether you're putting an LS in or not. Um, but the, in the Chevelles, like the pictures you showed just a moment ago, you'll see a show that the, uh, the shifter was off to the side. So what you're seeing here is a 67 Chevelle 396 big block car. And uh, we installed this TKX in place of the original four speed. And you'll see where the shifter is off to the side there, the red shifter. We call that our, you know, our side shift. And yeah. the beauty is, is it mimics the original Muncie. So we're modifying the, the Tremec TKX with the shifter through the original hole. We're not cutting the floor. Um, it's fitting in the tunnel. We're getting the proper drive angles. And and if you have a rock crusher, this not even the clutch has to be changed. But if you have, you know, a, a T10 or some other Muncie, you change the clutch. Bell housing remains the same. Guys can upgrade their hydraulics, which is we have a complete uh, Lightfoot series hydraulics that we can offer. It goes through the uh, stock clutch rod hole, and of course the slave cylinder. So whether it's five or six speeds with an overdrive, that's really our gig. We don't do any automatics. We're starting to do some more four. We're getting into four wheel drive stuff as we slowly move forward. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. you getting into four wheel drive stuff. High boys are easy because the transfer cases are separate. So short drive right. shaft, you can use a TKX again. Um, you know, Trema came out with the 4050. I don't know if you've caught word of that. Um, Never heard about that one. Um, Oh, geez, I forget his name now offhand. But anyway, they did a Bronco at SEMA a number of years ago, and uh, they used one of those uh, in there. So it's a 600 foot pound torque rated transmission, um, you know, gear uh, granny low, and it has a, an overdrive. That's really where it shines. That's cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know you guys were going down that road. It's you know, we're impressive. we're kind of running out of muscle cars to, to do and hot rods. So it's just a, kind of a natural migration because guys are wanting these early 70s, 80s cars. That's really seems to be the hot market right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the 30s and 40s and 50 cars that we do, flatheads, Y blocks, you know, guys are putting eco boosts in their early cars where it doesn't really matter to us. It's a, it's a challenge. How can we take you know, almost any platform and, and convert it, and whether it's a Miata or Sunbeam Tiger. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and and with with the TKX, it's something like a Sunbeam Tiger, it's easier to put it in. I mean, really it's challenging with the with the with a Sunbeam Tiger because these guys do not want to cut their floors. They want the shifter exactly the way it was. So yeah, that's yeah. the challenge we have in engineering these shifters. Well, it looks easy from the outside. We have to make sure that it performs exactly the way it was intended to. Oh, yeah, yeah that's true. Because Sunbeam Tigers ain't cheap. <laughs> no, <laughs> not cheap not. at all. <laughs> so, Bruce, you guys sell the entire kit, right? The entire conversion kit, soup to nuts, to your door, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we uh, handle everything from the back of the block to the second uh, U joint. So, these are just some of the images that we have. That's a, a Magnum XL there for a late model Mustang. It could also be into a Cadillac, late model Cadillac now, because Tremec's offering a GM version of this model. Oh. Um, and, of course, all of the components to go with it. But So we do everything from early to complete late, uh, whether it's a basic five-speed with a T5. Um, the previous uh, image you had was an image showing a, a modified T5 hot casting that we did a number of years ago. A lot of people uh, look to the T5 and then say, gee, it's inflexible, doesn't have multiple shift positions. Well, this photograph here kind of loosely shows shift box in the rear, shift box in the front. And with the offset shifters that we offer, I can put a shift lever almost down the entire length of that tail shaft housing. Wow. Really? Man, that's, that's pretty cool. incredible. That is. Yeah. 
Well, and so a lot of people think the T5 is dead, but it has its purposes, and it's good for about 400 to 450 horsepower. Yeah. Now, the T5s that you sell, if aren't they? They're world. They're the world class ones, right? Everything after 1985 has been world class. So there's different degrees of world class. Um, but the Z spec, which is a Ford Motorsport term that's been coined because it had a Z in the part number, but the the Z spec box is current production. And a lot of people don't realize that the T5 is the longest running production manual transmission superseding uh, the, the Muncie or a top loader that a lot of people think is you know still around. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. I know you could find T5s in just about anything with a stick back in the day. You did? <clears throat> yep. yep. Especially the S10s. Yeah. <laughs> Who drives an S10 anymore? <laughs> SpongeBob. <laughs> well, you know, it could be worse, you know. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go through some of the pictures that you sent over. Some of the cars that. Uh, sure. Yeah. So let's talk it through so people know what we're looking at here. Yeah, Brad. Oh, that's badass. Yeah, that's a, a that's a, a pretty typical car that we get involved with. Obviously, a thirty-two. Um, you know, we work with the uh, folks over at Roy Barizio. Uh, guys from Shadow Rods out of Michigan, you know, uh, uh, what got me involved with some of this is both passion and, and interest in the car. But we started working with uh, Shadow Rods out of Michigan who were doing uh, flatheads. And I really yeah. didn't know much about flatheads, but it's like I got to know a guy named Mark Kirby. We've yep. obviously lost Mark a couple of years ago and a uh, hell of a nice guy. I learned a hell of a lot from him. And um uh, I happened to be in town. We went up and saw each other, collaborated, hit it off immediately, and we started building flathead adapters, taking our front shift T5, putting it behind the flathead. So that's how we kind of got in that market. And, uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Mark Kirby knew some – he knew flatheads, man. God. Yeah, Motor him. City flatheads. Yeah, I met him when I was doing muscle car, and I have never met anyone that knew so much about flatheads. Did they ever start? I know he did that um that uh that aluminum block. Did they ever start producing that? Well, you know, Mark and I talked about what if, and right produced a number of them. I had the good fortune of driving uh, a couple of the prototypes, and phenomenal motor, just phenomenal. Um, Big dollars. Uh, I know that John Hall, uh, the owner of Shadow Rods, has intentions to continue with it. Uh, okay, cool. I don't know. I just know that they've spent a lot of time with the R&D on it. Right. They were technically challenged with aluminum block steel sleeves. Yeah, yeah. John, this flathead, he, he, he basically designed the flathead, made it so you could run the stroke or crank in it, everything. And then he gets the thing done, and he drives it cross country. That was a shakedown run. Mark Kirby. Mark Kirby would tell you the only real V8 is a flathead. Everything else is just it's just junk. You don't even <laughs> want to mess with it. Yeah. yeah. Nice piece though. Huh. Beautiful piece. Yeah. Yeah. The cool. guys would do a little street racing. They had it against a small block Chevy, and they were rolling along. And you know, of course, they hit it, and Mark would eat them up every time with a flathead. Every time. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. It's yeah, really? It was a nice piece, man. It was a nice car. Nice engine, I should say. Yeah, Brad, it had a supercharger on it. It was fast. Brad, bring up some of the other uh, pictures. Cobras. Yeah, we do a lot of Cobras. Um, my passion, obviously, with the NorCal Shelby Club, you know, got to know these cars. And uh, we offer, you know, five speeds for not only the Shelby America cars, but for Superformance or Factory 5, just about anybody who's building these cars. So to us, it's just, a, it's just another toy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those cars are always fun. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So cars, trucks, yeah. doesn't matter to us. Again, F-Series, you know, early truck, whether it's yeah. flathead, Y-block. Again, we just, you know, to us, we put it together um, so that the customer has got as much as of everything that we can possibly throw at it, including, you know, the biggest part, I guess, maybe I need to explain for a moment is why what do we do differently than let's say some of the other guys in the industry? We really pride ourselves on the customer service side of it and the, and the fit and, and giving the customer what they're looking for. In this particular photograph, you know, a guy's looking for a particular look or a particular feel. 
we're going to give them, you know, the shift position where they want it or coach them through the gear ratios and, you know, and not force them to come off of their floor mounted pedals would give them hydraulic or mechanical clutch linkage options. Right. You know, the, the thing that John, you're going to, you're going to think this is crazy. I, I would get calls from people and they're putting in, a, they're doing a five speed conversion and it's not Bruce's, you know, it's someone else's. And I would tell, I would tell him, look, man, this is what I know about it. But if you need to talk to someone, you need to call this guy. And I'd give him Bruce's number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and inevitably, inevitably, there was a bunch of guys that would call me back because, you know, the bigger thing, the bigger thing that I know was a problem was the, uh, the throw out bearing. And I knew Bruce had, had sat down with Tilton and they came out one that was specific for the swaps. And a lot of guys were having trouble with the throw out bearing. And I tell him, look, man, you need to talk to him about this. Next thing you know, they'd call me back and thank me. And they're like, oh, yeah. And I bought a throw out bearing. I bought all the stuff I need to make it right. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, it finish it off. Yeah. So when well, you know, what about the speedometer gear and things like that? Is that all worked out or you have to? Yeah. That? You know, it, what most people don't realize is there's certain standards. And so, yeah, it's easy for us to say whether it's a 1930s or a 1980s or 90s cars with cables, the standard is a thousand revolutions per, per mile for speedometers to be calibrated to. So as long as you do the calculations with circumference of tire and axle ratio, yeah. and you just compensate for it. And it's pretty simple. You know, today it's getting a little more challenging with electronics or GPS, but it's just a matter of understanding whether it's a two wire analog or a three wire, you know, a digital signal. And we've got devices to either multiply or divide or sensors that will do the job. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Now, tell everybody about tell everybody the whole thing about the throw out bearing, because that's a that to me, people need to know when you when you turned around and decided that you needed to make this change on that. Well, you know, it's it's interesting to be part of this industry and, and you know, it's one thing to be a hobbyist, but it's another thing to be involved and have an influence. And this is one of those products where I had a, a direct influence, frustrated with what was on the market. And I won't say who it was with, but I had a product that I could no longer support. It was just failure after failure. And, and I turned to Tilton Engineering, fantastic folks. Um, you know, they're they know their stuff. They 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 there's no compromise with the guys over there with Jason and, and the bunch. Um, and I said, Jason, I said, what's it gonna take to make a slip-on hydraulic throwout bearing that I can have? It's adjustable, that competes with a major brand. And uh, he says, Well, we need to have a better understanding. So I gave them the information. Years later, uh, we basically came out with a very competitive product. And uh, it's been a home run ever since uh, the Tilton 6000 series bearing uh, with its sealed design and, and robust uh, features. Rarely do we have a problem. And I know there's a lot of folks that say, oh, hydraulics are it's too complex. And, uh, oh, I don't want to do it, you know. And, and I was like, it's not that bad, you know. The, here's the funny part in this industry. You're talking about hydraulics briefly is people – think that you can just take two components that are hydraulic and literally just throw it together and magically it works. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Jeez. But see, you know, that that's the thing. You, The thing that I've always liked about you guys is you fix the problems that come up. A lot of people just don't want it. I don't know whether they don't want to do it or they don't know how to. So you fix it. And that's just, it makes my life easier. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it's doing for me. So yeah. I, I like it. I'm happy with it. You know, there's a lot of detail to what we're doing. and it, It's so easy to quit, step into quicksand. It really, really is. Yeah. 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 So it's pretty cool. I like it. Anything else? John, what else you got? Come on, John. No, I, I wanted to back up to the hydraulic, swapping that out. What headaches do the guys have going from well, traditional go. to hydraulic? What that what does that take? And is that a separate kit? Can you buy that on its own? And, and I yeah, we've designed a lot of hydraulic kits, and that's becoming kind of what we're known for. Is how do you take, I don't know, let's say a '60s muscle car and convert it to hydraulics? And a lot of times, guys are switching with LS-based engines. And there's no provision for a Z-bar really to, to go into that combination. So 
we're getting requests to take the, the original pedal because people want their yeah they want their old car to be old but they yeah. want it to drive like new right. so our challenge is to get the gearing right the hydraulic the feel so that when they get in their old car they're like oh my god i don't remember the car being like this we have a certain uh you know nostalgia about what these cars were like until we sit in the seat and go ooh yeah yeah that's so yeah. good so <laughs> yeah when we're doing hydraulics the challenge is getting to work with the space and the pre and you know, the engineering of the day well how do we make a new part fit in a very tight location whether you know because people are changing the power brakes and they're doing hydro boost or they're doing electric steering and so you're having to compete for the same spaces so the trick is, how do you make it look like it's really not there, make it operate like a modern day vehicle and uh, and make it reliable? So it's you have to make sure that you're getting the cylinder and the forces right. You don't want to break the firewall. OK, well, where do you mount it on this car versus another car? You know, the, the award that we won at SEMA was had to do with the SN95 hydraulics. And uh, we were challenged, okay, how do you work with the original pedal? And okay, there's not a lot of room underneath the dash. So we came up, you know, a Fox body in an SN95 car was cable operated. Well, how do you turn a, a pull into a push? So we came up oh, with a yeah. design and a roller and the, uh, the arm pushes the cylinder forward through the original cable hole. So we were trying not to take up any new real estate, but at the same time, make it so it would bolt in. And some of the clever things that we had to do to overcome being underneath the dash, because nobody likes working underneath the dash, uh, was, okay, how do we get the fasteners in? Well, Paul Coffey, who's been with me a long time, said, hey, how about we put this plate in, we put an earth magnet on it, and we snap this, this little plate up there, and then we could run the fasteners in. And that way you could do it with one hand. I said, sounds brilliant. And we had a customer we sent it to, and the guy says, how am I going to get this up there? And he he pushed it, and it went snapped in place. And he goes, what? That's my good. <laughs> Makes sense, little shit it? like that, you know. Yeah. Well, and, and and you guys, I remember when you came out with the bleeder kit for the hydraulics. Yes. That's yeah, that was Paul's idea. That You know, and, I, and you think about it, simple. Really, when you think about what a master cylinder is, it's nothing more than a glorified syringe. So right. why not fill it with one? Right. You know? <laughs> so we call it our one man bleeder kit. And it's exactly it because I would go to all kinds of places. I remember being on the SEMA floor one time, guy bought our product and had a beautiful Eleanor Mustang. And I walk up and I notice it's got our product on it. And I said, you know, hey, you know, thank you for using our product. And the guy was all frustrated because apparently he worked through the night trying to bleed the system. And I said, you know, and he just didn't. A lot of these guys just don't follow the instructions, but that's besides the point. But yeah. the point here is, is that it's like, how do you make this simple? Well, a little syringe, push it through the rest of work, <laughs> boom, down through. There you go. Yeah, it works. And see, yeah. Bruce, you know, you have to include a lot of pictures in your instructions because guys don't read. They look at pictures. You know that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and maybe noticing we're doing more and more uh, YouTube videos because, well, pictures are not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> nowadays they're not good enough yeah. nowadays not yeah, at all nowadays. <laughs> so that chevelle that you saw there a bit ago we did a five-part series on that where i it took us well you know it's like to film shows lou yeah. um, i think we had god i don't know six seven hours maybe more into filming that and it boiled down to like 15 minute segments you know yeah um uh, but it came out great, and we've been getting a lot of interest, you know, on that. And we plan to do more. Cool. Yeah, I got to get out there one of these years after I, you know, after I get a little bit in better shape. <laughs> we got to do some yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'd love to have you. Yeah, it'll be a hoot, that's for sure. Maybe I'll bring John. You know, there you go. go. <laughs> what, uh, Brad? Do you have any other pictures? I can't remember if there was a couple more. If that was it. Put put the whatever you have. There you go. Oh, four. Yeah. What are we looking at, Bruce? What would you do here? You know, I, I don't quite, always know the jobs that uh, we're doing, but this one clearly has a big block in it. I mean, a high-end build. Clearly, yeah. you know, guys, you know, say, hey, you know, he's building the, his dream car or dream truck in this case, you know, and we're challenged with 
a high level of product and expectations. And that's kind of showcasing a little of what we do here, you know, because for so long, people have pigeoned us as, uh, you know, five speed guys for Mustangs. And boy, we're just so much more than that over the last 24 years. Yeah, no right. kidding. You really are. You, went, you got a lot more stuff going on now. So if a guy, okay, so say a guy calls up and he wants a T56 and you've got a better option. Walk every, walk everybody through, maybe not a T56, but, you know, go through the whole thing about the gear ratios, what the, you know, what the benefit of one is versus the other, all that stuff. Because I know, you know, when, when me and you talk, it's, you know, we have these extensive conversations about a transmission. We're on sure. the phone like an hour. But, I, you know, and I know most guys aren't going to sit there and listen to that because a lot of guys just don't know. So walk us through that, because I think that's important for guys to know. Yeah. You know, the common question we get, we, we spend about 15 or 20 minutes talking to a guy. And sometimes they'll have preconceived notions of what they want, or maybe they have no idea, have no idea where to start. So a lot of times we'll sit, ask them, what are you building? What is your expectations? Are you going to just drive the car, autocross it, drift it, drag race it? And funny enough, the first thing we talk about is tire size. And they're like, why are we talking tire size? Aren't we trying to talk about gear ratios? I'm like, yeah, we're leading up to it. But a tire that's 25 inches tall versus a 30 inch tall tire is going to roll obviously less, less RPM or less uh, rotations per mile. So a guy with a Sunbeam Tiger is going to need a different gear ratio in the axle and different gearing in the transmission so that their crank to wheel ratio suits their project. Right. People, a lot of times when I come up to us and say, well, how much is it for a six speed? Well, it's like, it's a difficult answer to a question to answer because it's like building a house. Are we building three rooms or, or two? So as we walk through the process of talking with a customer, we want to know what they're doing. And if they're building a 32 with some 30 inch tall tires, 410, 430 gears is where you start. Sunday right. Tiger guy with a 23 inch tall tire, you know, you're talking 288, 308 gears in the back. So it's important to know what you're doing with a tire. It doesn't matter how you get there, whether it's a tall tire or a rubber band tire. But the important part is that once we understand what you're going to do with it, then we start talking gear ratios. Example, the TKX uh, five speed is offered in two different gear ratio sets. Um, we call them headsets or first gear ratios, 327 first gear. Um, to one, obviously, on the on the uh, drive shaft, or the more popular one is a 287 to one first gear ratio TKX. So whether it's a T5 or a Magnum, we, we talk about these gear ratios. So then it's a matter of, okay, how much motor do you have? Is the motor a, a big, lumpy cam, large port engine, carbureted? You know you're not going to be able to run a tall overdrive in that car. Right. So it's a matter of understanding what the motor is going to do because you can take a variable cam timed engine direct injected and you can run that motor down to 1500 rpm so at 0.5 overdrive you know 50 percent reduction is doable like a viper but you can't do that with a 429 boss motor you know it's just not going to tolerate it right so it's a matter of making sure that we're going to give them the first gear ratio for drivability and the sequential gears thereof and give them the final overdrive because people get all hung up about, well, I've got an overdrive. I can compensate for anything. Not really. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah. So a lot of times people have this preconceived notion of what they want. As an example, the TKX being so popular, that's really all that people want to talk about today. And I get it, okay, uh, but sometimes a guy with 300 horsepower, he could get into a T5 transmission for less money. Maybe it fits better. My opinion is the T5 shifts nicer, it's smoother based on the board Warner design, the single rail uh, shifting. But the TKX is popular, but some people lose track of the fact that you, you're losing power if you put too much drivetrain in a car like nine inch rear end with a TKX on a six cylinder, no, gonna, yeah, 
it's not working for you. No. Yeah. I got you. And it makes Pri sense. Prior to making uh, one of your videos, I'm guessing you get a bunch of questions on how to that lead up to that video going, we have to answer these questions. What What are some of the most common where people, well, it may seem obvious to you, but you still get the same question over and over and over again. Well, two of them that come to mind, one is hydraulic and bleeding because the bleeding of the system, getting air bubbles out, they, they'll typically call me and say, you know, I've, I've bled this system. I've gone five gallons of fluid through the system. I'm getting solid stream out the other end. What they don't understand is that when you have an elevation change of a master cylinder up high and a slave cylinder down low, there's a bubble in the middle that just isn't coming down. Yeah. And that the syringe gives you a, a lot of fluid rapidly through the system to burp the bubble out and boom, you're done. So there's definitely a, a, a video coming for that. Yeah. The other one that we get a lot of, I must answer this question. If it's not a dozen times a day, the phones are broken, but the um, you know clutch uh, clashing or disengagement. People get so caught up. We had a local customer to us with a, a beautiful Chevy pickup truck. He did the bell housing alignment, which people overlook so much, and it's important. And then, of course, the, the clutch, we, we sold the whole package to him, and he did all the due diligence, and he was absolutely convinced that the hydraulics were not working correctly. We did a house call. I stuck a 716 drill bit through the, uh, the fork opening to see how much the hydraulic tilt and bearing was moving. We were looking for 716 or 450 thousandths uh, expansion, and it was doing it. And I said to the guy, I said, um, you need to pull this apart. And he goes, well, why is that? I said, I want you to bring the clutch in just to have you uh, verify that, you know, we tested it you know, prior to leaving. He brings me the clutch. We test it on our builder's table. We, we find that it only takes 290 thousands to release the clutch. And I hand them a new bushing. In fact, it's sitting right here on my desk. And this little bushing right here in the camera. There it is. See, you can see how much this thing has been beat. Yeah. What you can't see on this, and maybe you can. You see the lip here? I don't know if the camera Yeah, I see it. Up. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. This guy drove this bushing in crooked. So what happened was he, oh. crushed he literally crushed it so that when you go into the you know the diameter, he was pinching the input shaft. So I hand him a new bushing. He takes it out with bread. I don't know if you've ever seen that trick. We with actually bread? show it. Bread, yeah. I've never Take seen it. that trick. Yeah, it's been featured in a couple of shows. I think Brian showed it and so forth. But you take a slice of bread, and I'm not making this up, but you take a piece of bread and you shove it right in the hole and you keep shoving it in there. And it literally hydraulics the, the bushing right out. You just no take way. it down the middle. Instead of using grease, which is messy, you use bread. And that's how you take them out. So he had a new bushing, and he's careful of putting it in. Lo and behold. <coughs> so the point I'm making is the answer – the question I get a lot is, well, I have a problem with the transmission. And what I do is I tell people to get the wheels off the ground, just the two rear wheels, put it on jack stands. I do a no load test, put it in first gear, clutch the car, the clutch in, start the car. Does the drive shaft and the wheels turn? Yes or no. If the wheels are turning when it's clutched in first gear, now why first gear? Because you have numerically geared down you have the most sensitivity to this problem right it's turning and you put your foot on the brake and it stops and you can raise the clutch a little bit you can start hearing the engine loading let's say it's a, an inch and a half off the floor you know it's not the clutch you know it's not the hydraulics you know it's in this bushing yeah and you have to go fix the bushing whether it's alignment or not a lot of times people say gee i went out for a drive the car shifts great when it's cold, but 15, 20 minutes into driving it, the, the car is clashing. It's the bushing, not the clutch. How much is that bushing? Six bucks. <laughs> Six dollars is driving you crazy. <laughs> it's the that it drives people crazy. Yeah, you're going to pull it apart. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. 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 What a pain in the ass that is. It is. But, but yeah. And and you know what? I prefer I prefer the 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 bushing like that than the roller bearing bushing. You know, it's one of those things where a bushing and by all means, do not grease your bushings. Yeah. Um, only bearings. 
we get so many people, they'll throw grease in there. And then when it dries out, it becomes paste. And like, uh, it's not yeah, working. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yep. Yeah. We got a question from uh, TH man. He wants to know what's a good five speed for my 76 Cutlass with a uh, 350. Oldsmobile 350. I, that that uh, that TKX was designed for it. There yeah, you go. I mean it's uh, you know um, yeah I mean you're you're basically talking you know Chevelle so yeah seventy six Cutlass you know um, again these these cars are have limited space so the smallest strongest five speed we have to offer is that TKX. Well, and what he needs to do is he needs to call you so he can play twenty questions with you. At least twenty. Because yeah. you got to go through the 20 questions before you find out exactly which one you're going to get. Because yeah. you got two options. So you might as well do it right. <laughs> exactly. It's Kevin wants to know worse. about your Fox body you built. My Fox body. I've got four Fox bodies. <laughs> um, which yeah, one? it's an addiction. <laughs> the, po the, uh, the poster you see behind me here, that's my 92 uh, Mustang Coupe. Um, it was, uh, I'm the third owner, a guy named Don Rossage was the original owner. He had special ordered the car uh, in the San Jose, uh, San Francisco area. Don loves dark blue cars, and he ordered this thing up. It was 1991, and uh, the dealership said, well, how about you, uh, would you mind taking delivery on a 92? And he goes, yeah, no problem. So he orders the, the coupe because it's the strongest and lightest of the bunch. And uh, the car comes in, and it was turned out to be a first-day build car, serial number 93. Wow. And uh, I didn't even know that, owning the car for probably the first year until my friend Don posted something on social media, and I had to go out and look at the VIN number, and I'm like, sure as shit. <laughs> so, anyway, Don only sold the car to Charlie because uh, he wanted to buy a house in the San Francisco area. It was expensive. So... This car has undergone a metamorphosis. It's got a Vortex supercharger, um, 327 stroker motor, you know. It makes 486 to the rear wheels, 465 foot pounds of torque. It's it's a dedicated road race car. And uh, believe it or not, it still has a T5Z in it with a Kevlar clutch. And uh, really? it's a hell of a lot of fun to drive. It's got Griggs suspension, bare brakes. You told me... Um... You told me a couple of years ago that you were taught that uh, you were having trouble getting clutches from the guy from your regular vendor because he was making them and something happened to him. And you were talking about starting to build your own clutches. Did you ever start doing that? Oh, yeah. Well, the, the, the history behind that is I worked when I was working at Charlie's at Charlie's Mustangs. Um, it, we, Robin Yates from Superior uh, Clutch. That's in what San it was, Jose. Superior was building clutches for Charlie. And then that's what kind of got me started with him. And at the end of the day, we lost uh, Robin Yates in 2016. And when he passed, I was like, oh shit, you know, we were really relying on the relationship and the quality of the products and the drivability that we wanted. Um, I went down and spoke with his widow, Lisa, and she wanted to sell me the business. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'm not interested in buying the business. But I'd be interested in, in, in taking this on as far as some of the product and the, and the stuff that uh, Robin and I did together. And, you know, we test a lot of our stuff like in the blue coupe, you know, like the Kevlar clutch. We were having problems with other people's products. And you just didn't get the attention of the details that we wanted, whether it was release or Marcel or drivability. Um, you don't see a lot of Kevlar in the marketplace, I think. Spec is another company that will do it, but Kevlar is a product that lasts so long and it's tough to break in because it is so durable. But it's, uh, I think the biggest reason a lot of major clutch manufacturers don't want to sell it is it doesn't wear out fast enough. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes, yeah. They're, they're, they're all about selling the part. Yeah. They want, they want that repeat sale. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yep. Makes sense. Yeah. So when you uh, the other thing that that I think guys need to know, I know with the the couple of transmissions that I've got from you, the T the, the TKOs, you put all the updates in them. It, you're doing that with the TKX, I take it, right? The beauty of the TKX is that we really don't. Um, really, I think the TKO was a, a kind of a dated design. It, it kind of a lot of technology that carried over from the old top loader days. You know, 
yeah. silicone bronze rings, you know, mm -hmm. on the synchronizers. Tremec basically used the synchronizing package from the Magnum into the TKX. So we've got now a triple cone and it's a hybrid ring. Oh, we're wow. carbon on one side and a, a, like a ceramic bronze on the other side. So it's capable of spinning to 8,000 RPMs. So there really isn't a need to do any upgrades. I mean, the thing works wow. other than changing the shifter configurations around. It's pretty much good right out of the box. Dude, that's awesome. I didn't know that about them. Yeah. That's cool. You know, but we are servicing, you know, all the T5s, TKOs, 3550s. We do offer the spare parts. It's a little more challenging. You know, stuff is aging out. You know? Right, right. I got a TKO laying in the yard. I got to send it to you so I can get it rebuilt. I don't, know, I, that, I don't know anything that about it. Is that, one that, is that one I told you about a million years ago? It's still laying in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> My son-in-law found it. He's like, Lou, you know you got a five-speed here? It's got a grass. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, it's, it's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like the first one ever. <laughs> Probably is. <laughs> So, John, did we cover all the bases tonight? Yeah, I mean, there was uh, he hit on quite a few things that I had on the on the list. Uh, pretty know, good for a guy with no outline, huh? <laughs> Bruce did. Bruce knew what to say. You had nothing to do with it. You I do this every day. Yeah, so yeah. To me, I'm just on autopilot. Push I was here, you know, autoplay. I was trying to keep it dumb. You can dumb it down a little bit, you know, because that's me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just looking at it. I'm trying to figure out who we got on next week, which is uh, <laughs> Scott <laughs> Sullivan, because I forgot to put that on the notes. Yeah, we got Sullivan. Scott Sullivan next week, Bruce. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, we got Scott Sullivan. You know, the I mean, you know, the father of Pro Street. I went up. It was funny because I was when I was doing a car fix, I said we were doing a Pro Street car or something, and I said Pro Street's dead. Oh my God, the backlash uh, I got. <laughs> the backlash. It was awesome. <laughs> you guys get some good, you guys get some good guests on here. I mean, I, you, I, I listen all the time and you know it's it's interesting of, of the people, the diversity of who you get in. Yeah. We try. We oh try. yeah, you're we doing gotta, it. We got we yeah, gotta bust it up. Yeah, we 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 try to get technical stuff. We try we try to get everything we can because I feel it well, we both feel that it's important and that we have to um like John says, we, we got to catalog all this stuff. We got to get it on. We got to get it on some kind of media so we can so people know about it. And that's yeah, the history of things because yeah. there's people like we had Gene Winfield on, and I just felt you oh, know yeah, what? we we got to have his story and tell have him. So I know it's out there, but I feel that somewhere down the line, somebody's going to Google how did this guy do this, and yeah. to somebody, this is important. You, you know, that they're looking, and I think it's important that the entrepreneur part of things is relevant too, because yeah. a lot of guys are just, uh, I want to be YouTube famous and that's the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But what I wanted to ask you, Lou too, is Lou, uh, Joe Coddington, I got her cell phone number. You think that we should give her a buzz? Yeah, let's get it. Let's get her. Talk about Boyd and the old days yeah, and what's happening. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought I'm for a second. For yeah, yeah, she would probably be a pretty good guest. Yeah, you know, the girl part of it too. We got You're Bobby right, Walden uh, coming on, too. On at all? No, I've been trying to get a hold of Charlie, but I don't have a number. I can probably get a hold of Charlie. Charlie lives about 15 miles from I know. Here. I know. I, I I mean, I remember you took me over to his shop when he was just finishing it up, but I oh. I never had a number for Charlie, and, and I don't see him at all the shows because I don't go out to the West Coast like I used to. You well, know? now that you're all fixed up, maybe you will. I know, right? Now I just got, you know, now I'm, I'm cruising now. I actually drove to the school today. It's well, a 20 minute drive and uh going was easy. I walked around a little while. I got my steps in driving back. It, it was starting to get uncomfortable. So I got a little bit of, I got a ways to go, but it was, it was a good, uh it was a good benchmark for me to, to see if I could do it or not. You know? Yeah. I'd love what, to have what, you out. Yeah. What meds are you on? What meds are you taking today? To... Right now, all I'm on is Tylenol, man. I've weaned myself off good. of everything. That's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm off of everything, but the, and and actually, the only time I take the Tylenol is when I'm feeling pain. So today I took it twice. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Plus, you know, I got a stupid pain tolerance. So if I'm bitching about it, it's hurting. That's you know, but I've been good. I'm getting. Yeah. I just, I just, I don't like doing the pain meds. They just, they're, they're, I don't know. They're just hard on you. Even if yeah, they are. you know, I, yeah, they're just hard on your body. So I just figured it's better not to do it. 
Yeah, yeah. and it's several different ways too. Plus, when right. you come down off them, you're in more pain than when you started. Exactly, and your brain's so making people... you think that you're in more pain, and that's how you get hooked. And I just I don't even want to deal with that. Yeah, I don't. I don't even want to deal with that. Drink yeah. heavily. Drink heavily. Exactly. Vodka is always good. <laughs> I'm a big fan of self-medicating. <laughs> oh, Lou, let me component. <laughs> let me know you want to go to Rick Ross's thing. I know you're well, you're going to Hotchkiss, but I'm th I'm seriously thinking of going to Rick Ross's party. You, you cover Rick's. You cover Rick's. I'll cover Hotchkiss, and then we'll have something to talk about. Uh, That's all. Take pictures. I may bring Ed with me. Yeah, take Ed with you. Yeah, we'll, we'll run and block. Then, and then what we need to do is is is. Before the summer ends, we need to make a run out to see Bruce. Seriously, we should do that. Yeah, please be to stay. Yeah, that's right. He's got a yeah. We could stay. We could. He's got a place. We could. We could crash there for a couple of days. Bruce, you ever do the power tour? You know, I've done a power tour once. Um, what you, you know, think? Tremic, but I have never done it personally. Love to do oh, it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've never done it. It's on my list. I don't know what I'm getting into, but I'm trying to put that together. We'll see. It's such a diverse um, amount of uh, you know vehicles that go on that tour, you know. Yeah. Like when I get the shag wagon, I'll, I'll head out. There you go. In the van. <laughs> you got air. Pictures. You got air in that thing or no? No, the only thing I got air is two windows and you know sixty miles oh, an hour. Oh boy, there, there you go. go. There you go. <laughs> Old school. The, Open the van. Big AC oh, unit on the roof like they used to back in the day. <laughs> the floor <laughs> Conalon got the floor vents down on the kick panel still. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the leaves blow around and shit when you open it. <laughs> Pine well, needles. The for you get more air that way. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember, in the, I remember in the, you know, in the, the, when, in the late in late spring, you know, you're cruising along and you pull the vents like, ah, you're trying to do yeah. it. Like <laughs> <laughs> Tornado. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. Everybody uh, knows that. Yeah, you don't know if it's rotisserie or non-rotisserie. <laughs> <laughs> it's yep. all good all right well this is what we're gonna do bruce thanks for coming on thanks, say good night to everybody Bruce. Good. say good night and where everybody can reach you all your social media stuff tell them tell oh, the masses yes. you can always see us at moderndriveline.com our youtube channel modern driveline hashed or forward slash modern driveline we have uh facebook and instagram under the same name so check it out we're always posting something, new videos always uh, on the horizon. Check out our uh, our uh, Fox Body drag racing series. We'll be running that through the summer. Oh, cool. I didn't know you guys were doing that. Oh, yeah. All right. So, Bruce, have a good evening. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Bruce. And we'll get this thing wrapped up. All right. So, John, say good night. Yeah. Good night. Did you enjoy the show? Was it good? For, was it good enough? Did you learn anything? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, I, I see here. Eric just popped up. I didn't know that Eric was watching. Eric invited us out to his wedding on 420, New Mexico. Oh, 420, Eric. Yeah, he's getting married. He's getting married on the 20th. Well, he said he was going to get. He said he was going to get married, but he didn't say the date. You know. Good for so, him. You following yeah, him on Instagram? Good. I do. I follow. He's got. Him. He, he's got goats and chickens. And he's, he's got all kinds. Of, he's got. He's got a damn regular regular like farm going on. Yeah, he's like a yeah, cowboy yeah. out there. So you guys remember on 420, send your pictures to three left. Uh, oh God! Yeah, three left don't. Blank. Three lefts don't at Gmail, and we're gonna pick some pictures, and we're gonna contact whoever whoever the project belongs to. We're gonna have at least three of you guys on, and we're gonna talk about your stuff. So just remember, send them in to three lefts don't at gmail.com, and we'll go from there. And we're checking it because I looked at it today to see if there was any in there. So we're checking everything. And then we'll go from there. Next week, we have who, John? Sullivan. Scott Sullivan. Scott Sullivan. You said it earlier. That's right. I was busy, you know, running everything yeah, I, in my I head. I got you. I got you. you know. <laughs> That's a Tylenol so next, kicking in. I know. So next week, we have Scott <laughs> Sullivan. He is the guy who is regarded as the godfather of Pro Street. He actually, um, Hot Rod Magazine, a couple years ago, maybe four years ago, they did a thing on like the top 12 influential cars, in, you know, in, in the car world. He had three. So that's pretty serious. So next week is Scott Sullivan and it'll be fun. Trust me on that. Until then, you guys have a great time. Glad to see you checked in. We're going to be at one on Spotify, one on YouTube. Follow us, love us, like us, hate it. It doesn't matter. 
listen to the show, watch the show. John, later. Later. Brad, thanks, later. <laughs>